Live Better and Longer with The Fitness Show, hosted by fitness expert, author, and TV personality, Fitz Kohler. She'll tell you why diets are dumb, supplements are snake oil, and the truth about how you can earn a lean, hard, pain-free, and athletic body. Now for our favorite bossy blonde, Fitz Kohler. Hi team, I'm Fitz Kohler, your fitness expert from fitness.com, and welcome to The Fitness Show. Today, I have a very exciting treat for everybody because the one and only, should I call you Michelle? No, Melissa. No, it's <laughs> Melissa De Stefano is back. Welcome, Melissa. Hey, I feel like I'm a stranger here now. I know. It's been a while. I know. I've actually wanted to have you back a whole bunch, and I think about you every week, but life is chaotic. And... I think about you every day. Aww. Oh, by the way, I have to say thank you. Because last week on the show, you said that you only associate up. Yes. And I thought, she considers me associating up? Absolutely. Like, I, so I have to say thank you. You're thank no, you're putting you're me welcome. in that category. You are totally up. <laughs> yeah, here's the deal. If I don't return your phone calls and I don't spend time with you, you're not up. <gasps> okay, I'll keep that in mind. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's actually a lot of people that I that are way up from me that I would like to spend time with, but they're too far. They're too far up? No, they're too far away. <laughs> You're too far. Gotcha. I'm not just ditching the people I'm not hanging out with. Well, that's, but just, that's what Facebook is for. Do you think that's a good policy? I know. I love that policy. No. Absolutely. And we just, in your head, you don't have to name the names, but how many people could you pull up that just drag you down, that are succubus on your energy and your joy? Well, I, there are a lot of people who suck on my joy, but I just don't allow them to do that anymore. You avoid them. Yeah, like absolutely. Like the play. You remove them. I unfollow them. I unfriend them. I block them. I... Take them out of my phone, block their number, lock my door, change my number, That's change right. my Move email, away. Yeah. change We're my gonna, name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Living in Antarctica. Yeah. yeah. I tell you what, so um, the other day, you came in mentioning it because I posted on Facebook, but my amazing children who are, I really think they're the best people ever. Your and kids when, are pretty awesome. They're, they're fabulous in every regard, and if I could be anyone else in the world, I would be my daughter. That's, that's the truth. But they were crabby, and... Just the simple things like leaving the house in the morning without saying goodbye and giving me the, you know, the quote unquote, the tone. Mm, I hate and that tone. just wait till your kids are the teenagers. Eye roll and that. Yeah, I'm really feeling unappreciated because I don't know if people think I'm a mom. Maybe they, they think I'm a taskmaster, but I am so doting. Parker, he wakes up and I sing him this song. I sing him a nighttime song and a morning song every single day. Aww. And I sing Ginger at night when she lets me. And we, there's endless cuddles and. I'm always telling them how fabulous they are and how much I love them and, and you know, gush, gush, gush. And then we do stuff together and we, we play tetherball and go for walks and I get them the things they need. They're, they are worshipped, loved children. And then sometimes they're just, lately they've been a little dismissive of that, you know, mm. and just say goodbye on your way out. Like, bye mommy, have a good day. Mm. It's, it's not too much the to eclipse. Ask. It's totally the moon mm. and the eclipse and... It's throwing oh everybody off because my kids have just had an attitude too and they're just not listening very well. Oh. But, but I did get a really sweet letter from Gabriel's teacher. She said that he's the best kid in her class. Wow. Yeah, I know. Slam from my dunk. kid, I know. And it made me cry. Like boo-hoo cry. Oh, really? Yeah, it was long. And I thought <laughs> after the first paragraph there was going to be a, but he's... Yeah, yeah. He's fighting people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he punched a kid in the nose. No, none of that. It was all it was gush, just, gush, gush. And I was fantastic. like... Oh, Mm. My kid. But at so, home, there's no, thank you, mommy. Can I have that, please, mommy? Uh, or it's, mommy, can I have water? Well, get me yeah, water. Go, go get, get me. Get up. That's and nice. you have two hands and uh -huh. a mouth and two feet that, that work. Get yes. up and get your own water. Yeah, well, get me one while you're at <laughs> yeah, right. So, So mine are being crazy. Can you put vodka in mine? Yes, good. right? <laughs> That's so nice. So anyway, the other day, they, they had just pushed my limits with their snottiness. We're going to say that. And so I decided I'm done. I'm leaving. And I had already worked out in the morning, but it was about 8.30 at night. And I just said, y'all, I'm going to the gym. I didn't storm out. I didn't slam the door, hang up, do all those dramatic things. I just said, I'm going to exercise. Bye. You know. So I oh, go you to, said bye? You shouldn't have said bye. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My politeness is endless. So I did that. And then I came home and everybody was asleep. And that was wonderful. And in the morning, it was ah, still not delightful. And um, I went, I escaped. I think this is the moral I'm trying to tell you is, and everybody else, is you don't have to tolerate it, even within your own home. You can cut the people off on Facebook that you just want to unfollow or unfriend because they're dopes. Mm -hmm. But within your own home, you can un 
connect them. You can disconnect from your people. And so I did that at the gym. And then yesterday, oh, and I got into it with this dopey, dopey manager at Office Depot the other day. So basically society was annoying. So I went it's into... the eclipse. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. But I went in the woods. I literally took an hour and I hiked through the woods all by myself. And um, I didn't even see Bigfoot. There was no Bigfoot. No Yeti, no nothing. No skunk ape, yeah. Oh, and uh, no But it was ape. so nice. And you know who was Loch Ness really... Monster, nothing. I tried, I tried. Oh. But here's the deal. I was in control of me. And I'm a really nice person, especially to me. And so I took control and I went, bye-bye, mean people. And I isolated myself in a really productive way. And so for the people out there who are taking it. Did you feel better after that? Oh, yeah. Because I've been finding that if I get into a funk at all, whether Mm -hmm. it's like um, I'm just not focused or I feel sad or just not myself – if I go for a run or like a a sweaty exercise and and get sweaty, then – I'm back. Like my emotions are back. The endorphins are kicked in and I'm back to being me and it makes a really big difference. And I find now, you know, okay, so I've said this, I'm not a runner, but you're a runner. You're definitely a runner. (laughs) You're a lying runner. That's what you are. So like lying down. No, I swim. That's when you lie down. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, I find that the endorphins kick in and I'm more myself and I'm more manageable. Like, you know, there's science behind that. That, I'm that sure there physical has to be. venting of that frustration is productive and makes you happy in a run, like in that yeah, any or around. any sort of exercise, any way to physically expel your pent up frustrations and energy literally gets out your frustration. I was listening to a talk by Dina Dina Castor, the, uh-huh. the runner, I know and that. she was saying that um, she was sinking into a depression after an injury, sure. and um, she found herself that when she started running, that if she stopped running for a few days, that she would find herself starting to sink back into yeah. depression. So now she runs every day just for her mental health. And I thought, I'm probably going to be that person. Yeah. And so Dina, and I know Dina, she's a really nice lady who's accomplished so much, but a little tisk tisk for her because, you know, running every day is counterproductive to mm-hmm. being a runner. Um, but yeah, but you got to be able to find that relief in many outlets because say you break your leg, you can't yeah. run. There's got to be something else. For me... It used to be kickboxing, obviously, when I was fighting. I, I literally at one point thought, I am the most well-adjusted person in the world because there was no pent-up anything. Nothing I was could constantly bother hitting stuff or people, which is so gratifying. So um, <laughs> Don't it, hit your children. Stop no, hitting your That's I the know. problem. They're That's too it. cute. I would never <laughs> lay a hand on them. But, but then it was wonderful, and now you know, running would do it for me, cycling, swimming, but weights weightlifting and I call on my boyfriends and then you know what I did too I went in there and then I put on cranky music I added cranky music I put on Alanis Morissette oh that's good that's, that's cranky good. stuff oh, yeah. right her old stuff totally yeah cranky. I couldn't yeah. I just was flipping through and I couldn't tolerate you know Fleetwood Mac or Pitbull I found something cranky you know what along I really with my mood I like <laughs> Pitbull I, there's one song that comes up on my list when I um put on my angry music and it's from Beetlejuice, at, well, at least that's the movie it was in. The Hey Senora. Yeah. Pitbull does a version of that, and it's awesome to run to. He's a fun it's guy. Awesome. He makes some really good music. But then again, if you're in a mood and it's annoying, that would then... would tick me off if right, I were yeah. cranky. Yeah. And I'm rarely cranky, so that's actually the problem. I feel like I'm so happy, and these people are cranky. Why are you trying to bring down my happiness? Yeah, they're bringing I'm you down. so full of the happy. Can you block your you're family? You're full of like, the crappy. Happy. The crappy. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Are we going to talk about that? <laughs> Oh, and we are going to talk about that. Fantastic. So, so your headband switching topics reminded me there's some post. Chad Warrick put it up today about James Cameron, the director of Titanic. My, and my headband, because you guys can't oh, see it, is it's a, a Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. I was going to point it out. Okay. But, yeah, but he put up a post, or James Cameron says something about the movie Wonder Woman is diminishing <gasps> to women. No. Mm-hmm. over no himself mm, no. she's strong and fabulous mm. and hey she happens to look hot in her little leotard outfit mm. is i don't know if that's what he's considering demeaning to no. women but it's like she's half naked there are half naked like laura croft was more half more naked even if she was uh, and, and here's the deal and and this is interesting because i heard some like far lefty people were angry at gal gadot the actress who plays Wonder Woman because she actually was in the Israeli army. She let it, because when you're there, I think at 16, every 100% of all the Israeli citizens have to go into the military at age 16. And I think it's a two-year enlistment. I'm not sure. But anyway, she literally did fight ISIS. She literally fought terrorists 
And why and, is that a problem? Well, because she was fighting against terrorists, and they don't want her to. I guess they want her to let them blow, oh people, blow Israelis up. But they need to run. They I know. Need they need, they need, they <laughs> need to go. need some morning mile. But yeah, Wonder Woman. <laughs> and when I was, she was my person when I was in preschool, uh, elementary she's school. My, Remember she's my person. I'm on a triathlon. Linda Carter. Yes, love Linda Carter. Oh, did you have the underoos? I did. I actually have, I have. Grown up underoos. Oh, some of those. Yeah. yeah, I actually wore the underoos, but I wore my mom, and I, I give credit to my mom for this. She let me wear them out. Oh, nice. Because they were the un, they were the square undies, I think, with the long tank top. Mm -hmm. That was the underoos. So I got to wear my underoos like to out. lots of places, and then I was Wonder Woman. Uh, maybe I was six or seven for Halloween, but it was the plastic, um, you know, like the plastic trash bag <laughs> yeah, material. Yeah. Wonder Woman shh, costume, shh, when you and then the plastic mask with the eye holes and the mouth holes and the, the rubber nice. band around your head. Nice. With a fake little plastic crown that was yes. on top of it. Yes. How mm. awesome was that? That's awesome. I'm part of a triathlon team this weekend, a relay. Yes. For, um, I was going to ask you about race. that. And um, our team name is the Wonder Women. Woo! Yeah. And so it's you and Stephanie Schmansky and who oh, else? Oh, Stephanie's injured. She <gasps> can't run. Oh, I thought she was going to do something else. Mm. That's why I said she should run. Okay. Who's your other people? Um, Rebecca is part of... The Gainesville Triathlon Club. She's gonna Rebecca Lau. She's gonna be. Oh, our, I know Rebecca. Our she's fantastic. She's awesome. Yeah, she's she's. Rebecca, wonderful. here's a sidebar. Oh, I'm sidebarring again. Rebecca, <laughs> this is she, totally abnormal for us to sidebar no, no. on anything. So we'll go back to the triathlon <laughs> team. Rebecca is a great triathlete, very active, and she got a stress fracture mm -hmm. in her pelvis. In her pelvis, yes. And her crotch. Yeah. And she posted. The x-ray yep, up yep. on uh -huh. Facebook. Sure and so I discussed it with my physical therapist one day because I said, Rob, she posted the picture of the pelvis fracture. He goes, and everyone just stared at the soft tissue. <laughs> 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 they sure did. And so awesome. I didn't stick around for the comments, but oh, I the knew they were, were coming because it, oh my oh, gosh. But I, so I saw a couple of weeks later, she had said, well, I'm not going to post my x-rays because y'all can't <laughs> handle it, but <laughs> pelvis fracture is healed. But did you know you could fracture your crotch, people? I've, I've, I've never heard of a stress fracture of your crotch. Yeah. She, she had girl. a little bit of an injury. Um, I was, wasn't trauma. There was a trauma. No. Oh. No. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> Not from that. Wow. Brown chicken, brown cow. That's no, really not right. Exciting <laughs> experience. You broke your crotch. Oh, my, my gosh. Oh, I'll hail that gracious. guy. Gracious. And now we're, we're kind of looking for a runner. Um, Rob Stewart may be a Wonder Woman or. Um, he would be a fabulous <laughs> Wonder Woman. My friend LaVon is possibly going to be LaVon. a Wonder Woman. I love LaVon. She's great, too. Yeah, she is. Okay. She is. So, Rebecca, is she running or cycling? She's cycling. I'm okay. um, swimming. And how far is the distance of the run? The run is. Uh, it's 10K, so it's okay. 6.2, and the swim is about a mile, and the cycle is 25 or 25 or 30 miles. Yeah. And and thank goodness her crotch is healed. Yes. Yeah. So, well, she you know she cycled through the whole broken sure. pelvis, but she didn't she couldn't run, but she could right. cycle. So she actually did a hundred mile century ride with a broken crotch. There's She's crazy. So many th well triathletes. If it wasn't damaging to your crotch, there's a lot of things you could do, and that really. <laughs> When you're injured, injuries don't have to sideline you completely. No, they don't. They just they force don't. you to be creative. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so whatever's going on, whether you've broken your foot or your crotch, there are plenty of exercise options. <laughs> yes, there are. So are you wearing a Wonder Woman thong bikini as you uh, swim? As I swim? Yeah. A mile? No. 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 Mm -mm. Just a regular old thong? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I was thinking about, you know, just wearing like a Wonder Woman my headband around my waist, possibly, you know. That's what just, you should do. No. Why wear clothes? <laughs> It'd probably slow you down to shave your body uh -huh. and dive in. Yeah, because the boobages, you know, hanging all in the water would <laughs> totally just like a torpedo. I'd a little duct tape. Through. Pin them down. Yeah. Off you go. Mm. That sounds exciting. What's you know the name what's of the race? crazy, though? Oh, it's the, um, it's at Camp Landing. It's the Hammerhead um, triathlon right on base. So that's going to be Super really fun. awesome. Yeah, I did, it was my first there... real triathlon that I did. Um, so I had done a super sprint triathlon two years ago, and then that summer I did the Hammerhead um, triathlon there at, at Camp Landing. So this is going to be really fun to kind of re, re Go back to yeah, it. to be there. And, and, and you don't it. have the ability to fall down in the water and break things. Right, so it's a good thing I'm mm -hmm. swimming. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is actually a nice match for you. So <laughs> not naked doing that. What was I going to ask? You know, I put on my tri-suit 
to, um, cause you know, the last time I wore the tri suit was last tri season. So I wanted to see how it fits since oh, I've lost weight. Oh, it doesn't, weight. does it? It did not fit. No, there, um, I had one, my first tri suit is way too baggy. It's just, cause you're it, 82 pounds down. Yeah. Yeah. And then I put on the other one and it, it, it fits. It's wearable. I don't know that I would make it through like a half Ironman in that suit, which would have been totally doable, you know, 82 pounds ago. But, um, it, it works, but I'm going to need to buy a new tri yes. yeah. Not sorry about that. Not sorry at I all. I know, but I should have tried it on a little sooner, a little, yeah. like way, like, weeks or months ago. But um, yeah, kind of exciting. I need a new tri suit now. So okay. I am not, you know, I, I engage in all this stuff and normally I'm in on a whim. You know, I don't train for my half marathons. Right. I just pop in. And then the other day, the city of Gainesville offered a little biathlon. They called it a biathlon. It was a, it was a one mile run and like a hundred to your 200 yard swim. It was really short. But I thought, that sounds fun. Yeah. I'll go do it. Why not? And um, so I'm, I'm really going with the wardrobe right now. I mean, there's a, there's a few conversations. A, <laughs> it was fun. I showed up. There was 11 people. And what I loved is that it was every man. There was, there was some people in their 60s that I thought were in damn good shape for their 60s. I mean, they were great athletes, prepared and ready to go. And then there was, some, there was a guy that was maybe mid-50s wearing big jeans and construction mm. boots. And he had a mullet and a mustache. And he was so cute. He just walked the mile and then he went and changed and he put his short his swim trunks and t-shirt and did the swim. And I love that guy because, you know, he's every man. And if everybody mm -hmm. just kind of gave it a go like he did, he didn't run. He walked. Um, there was people of all different weights and some lady with arthritis in her 70s. I, I just love being around the people. But, you know, for me, it was fun because I'm always in charge of things. It was nice to show up and be just like a person yeah, engaged. Ready to go. Okay. I can yeah. do that. And it, it turned into a solid 14 minutes of exercise for me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I stuck around and swam some laughs after. And the, just a group of people were wonderful. The city provided lunch. It, it was so nice. But um, but the wardrobe thing. So this is what I do. I put on my bikini. And um, I put the bikini on, some shorts over. And then I put a sports bra over my bikini. Okay. Because... The boobs, mm -hmm. right? I have to wear a sports bra under my tri suit. So okay, yeah, I guess. all right. So then <laughs> I um I have a t shirt on or a tank top, whatever. So I go do the run, but when I started running, my the my swimsuit, my bikini top has a band, and then the sports bra had a band too, oh, and did it was you get shaved. No, but it was squeezing so tight mm. that my lungs couldn't expand all the way. Oh no! So it was really weird. So oh. I started, and it was only a mile run, so it wasn't you know. It was fine, but the, for five I was miles or ten just miles. simply not able to get a a full cleansing breath. I it was what 10, 10 minutes of half breaths. It was really <laughs> weird. So I thought, ah, maybe I need to get one of the official somethings. This is why before any race, yeah. you should wear I know. what you're supposed to wear I for know. the race, so you can make sure that there's no shaping or breathing but issues. Melissa, I just pop in. <laughs> That's the problem. That's, am I supposed in. to prepare? I'm and sorry. Plan ahead. But Ugh. you know what? I did enjoy being part of the group. I thought it was fun to be the person in the group. And then um, it kind of re inspired me to go maybe do another triathlon. I thought, this is so fun. And, you know, especially with the shorter distance, you're not doing too much of anything. So mm -hmm. you never get to the point of suffering. Right. We'll do a sprint together. Yeah. Sprint that uh, Gator one. I was, I was thinking oh, I about that, that, but I'm... Rob Stewart's going to do that one in March. So we should do that. March, I am usually gone every weekend well, announcing maybe it's races in California. So if, but, but yeah, I thought about that this morning because it was really a fun time. So if you have never done one of these... Find, quote, unquote, super sprint or a duathlon. A try, a try. Yeah, something where you walk or run a 5K mm -hmm. and then you get in the pool and do some swimming. And it's just nice. It is. Really nice. nice. So um, speaking of triathlon, yes. Yes, you are a hot babe, sexy supermodel for a triathlon. <laughs> Tell everybody about okay. that. Okay, you're going to make me blush. Come on, Melissa. <laughs> Frag a little. So, so Iron Man um, has Iron Man, like not the superhero Iron Man, but like the swim by run Iron Man. They um, have a foundation, the Women for Tri, mm -hmm. to um, support women who want to get into triathlon. As um, I'm encouraging them to do. Right, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't matter who, what shape or size or it, yeah. every person 
to um, to get into the sport of triathlon. There's it's just such a supportive community, and so um, they wanted to do a photo shoot to support and um, the foundation Women for Try and to feature their um, gear yeah, and Ironman to show you know what uh, what they do and, and what Ironman is, and so they. Asked that they asked for models to do this photo shoot. Real people, real they athletes. They have a professional photographer in charge of that job here in Gainesville. Yes. What yes. are the odds? One of their photographers. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, so, one of the women who is a member of our tri group had talked to her, I guess, at one of the races and said, "Hey, we've got you know some great women." And they were looking for real women, not models who have never done a race before. These were real women who have done triathlon sure. or are involved in the sport. And um, I was selected as one of these 14 women to be a part of this photo shoot. And uh, no, we was like maybe 10, 10 women. And um, it was so much fun. So the woman who was in charge of the Women for Tri Foundation came, and she had already had outfits selected based on our size that we had sent in and photographs of, of ourselves. And you gave the wrong in. size. I had to try on three different sizes because I, t- based on their measurements, I was a medium. And when I tried on the medium, it was way too big. And that was the first mm, time sorry. ever that I had to be a small. And I'm like, why is this not sinking into my head that I'm a size small now? So um, I had to try on... Uh, different outfits and she was like oh we'll try this okay we'll try this okay we'll try this and everything was a size small and I was just like uh, uh. so um and and was, what size were you wearing two years ago a large a large okay yeah. 14 it's a big difference four no mm-hmm. four, four to wow 14. I had to get another smaller bra oh. because the other one was too big yeah so now I'm on my third bra yeah how about that I know crazy crazy Woo! but the photo shoot was awesome it was long it was four hours they um photographed us running and there were uh, like four of us running and then they photographed some girls with their bikes and holding their bikes up in the air and um they had me um, with a bungee and a dumbbell and one girl with her amazing shoulders and back was like almost climbing a wall and they took a picture of her doing that cool that um it's hashtag squad goals is the campaign okay and uh, that's actually a very popular hashtag it is. so it might it is. be hard to find um but it's also um why we try okay and so you can find it women for try why we try there's a Facebook page, Women for Try. There's probably a fan page for you now. Oh. Melissa's my favorite model oh, stop page. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. So they had released one photograph at Lake Placid, at um, the Iron Man Lake Placid in New York, and uh, it was three of the women who were part of the Gainesville, the G3, our Gainesville Triathlon Club, and I wasn't in that one, but they put it on this humongous billboard and wow. then on a big jumbotron, oh, lovely. and one of our G3 members was there, and um, the crowd went crazy when they announced that these were real, you know, triathletes yeah. who have done Ironman, and um, so the crowd went crazy, and one of our members had taken a picture of the billboard and was like, hey, we're there! So um, I was like, okay, well, that's the only picture from the whole shoot they're going to use. It's okay. You know, I, we had fun anyway. Maybe we'll get to see the the other pictures and then yesterday the women for try released a new cover photo for their facebook page and bam in the middle of the photo is me and you look beautiful no oh, it's crazy it it's was crazy i was like wait that's me wait so my uh, highlight huh? i really like your outfit because you're wearing something different than they all are yeah i am you got a killer smile your butt looks fabulous oh thanks i kind yeah, of thought yeah. my legs look pretty hot in there they did yeah it did it's perfect and, and all the girls look fantastic too and- um, Rebecca's in that picture. Did you see her? I on did her see her. Yeah, I did. So. And she, you could not tell that her crotch was broken. And she stole my headband, by the way. She's wearing my. I had to buy another one because she what? left with my headband. I know that was the first time. So if anybody does her see crotch this picture, must have been broken at that time. I believe it probably was. <laughs> right? It was. Oh, about I think she was ago. healing. She was healing, healing at the time. It's still broken. <laughs> you got to give her. And you got to give her some some space to steal headbands. My crotch were broken. I may steal some stuff too. You know what? I had coochie cancer. I'm not going to steal somebody's headband. What? Coochie cancer? No, I know, but I think you did steal some things. You just don't remember. <laughs> we we really? blew, we call really? that chemo brain. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I did klepto klepto chemo. Yeah, really? chemo klepto. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So where was I? I was talking about. You're the- talking about looking hot in your pants in the modeling shoot, uh-huh. and now you have an agent. No, no, what? no. You are crazy. No, you they're are beautiful. Crazy. They're beautiful. I can't wait to see more. It was so much fun. It really was a good time. And I feel honored to have been just even a part of the women who were selected. Just crazy out of body experience to see the photograph yesterday. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I don't enjoy photo shoots. They torture me. 
it wasn't. I mean, it was long. It was yeah. a. It was a long yeah. shoot. And then, but then again, there were ten of us, so it'll probably be a lot more fun with a bunch of girls or people. But by yourself, I couldn't imagine. It's very weird. But they kept saying to use a badass face, like look badass, look badass. So as they were photographing other women, I got my phone out and was like, had it in selfie mode, so I could look at my face, like what it yeah, would look yeah. like. And I'm like, God, I look constipated. I don't look <laughs> badass. I look like I've got a poop and nothing's happening. <laughs> no, you look beautiful. You believe I go to my photographers. I'll say, all right, can I see? Okay, like I'm the I'm the nosy person in front of the camera. Okay, let me see that, and I'll look, and I'll go. All right, I look stupid that way. Let me do this, and so it'll help me alter yeah, absolutely what I'm doing. But I have literally had photo shoots where I keep going to the camera, going, "I hate my face. Look at my face. I hate my <laughs> stupid face today." And the photographer goes, "What a stupid face! This this is stupid face. I hate my hair. What?" And then and then we'll always find some to use. But at the moment. It's my least favorite. I don't mind if people take candid photos of me, you know, like when you're running, I get that, mm -hmm. or when you're announcing. I'm announcing mm -hmm. and I get a great picture, but ugh, it tortures me. That tortures me. I'm glad you had a really fun time. It was fun, but they wouldn't let us see any of the photographs while they were shooting, so um, to see any of them is That's because been... I'm in charge when I'm with <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we were definitely not in no, charge. They, they were, Iron Man was in charge. No, you look fabulous. Oh, I'm excited to see yeah. more. I can't wait. I can't wait. This was one of the end because all the other ones prior to the, because this is a happy one. Like we're all laughing and jovial and having a good time. That was at the very end because they didn't let us smile the entire photo shoot. It was all like hmm. serious workout face, blah, blah, blah. make yeah. a sweat, get a glistening face, pretend, you know, make it. Okay. Yeah. We just, we, we just did a wall squat for, I don't know, two minutes. Yeah. I'm sweating. Or yeah. yeah. We yeah. just planked on a brick wall for yeah. five and a half but minutes. You just let us work out and then take pictures. Yeah. That's what that's you want. Better. So we, we did. We planked on a wall for five and a half minutes on a brick wall, and my hands were killing me, and my arms are shaking, and it's a good thing it's not on video because you would have been able to see that the... Right. Uh, so it was a lot of fun, though. We had a good time. I always prefer being on video. Yeah? Yeah, because nobody catches you in one stupid moment. I'm, act I'm moving continuously in a series of stupid faces that just... Nobody gets hung up on one particular one. <laughs> Trust me. I've got this down, Melissa. A series of stupid faces. My series. So this is great because I'll have, uh, with my news segments, for example, they'll, the news organization will send me a link, and so I've got to get a screen grab. You yeah, know, something yeah. to link. The, oh, boy. Try and get a screen grab of yourself on video. Everybody try this today. Video yourself and then hit pause. And as imagine the pause being the cover shot. Play pause, play pause, play Aye. pause, play pause. <laughs> Horrible. So anyways, video is much better. It's much more forgiving, I think. Okay. As long as you Good sound intelli intelligent. Intelligent. If you, if, if you, say, if you sound mm -hmm. stupid, a video is horrible for you. But anyways, you're a hot model. Thank and you. then, but you're also pretty creepy. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. We're gonna, yeah. I thought you associated up, but now you just call me creepy. And I, I prefer creepy and sarcastic, but this is <laughs> above and beyond. So you went to... The Flying Pig with Katie Stefaniak and Jason Stefaniak to support Rob Stewart. And Michael Jones. Oh, Michael Jones was there, right. Yeah. And you went there to support Rob Stewart, who was mm -hmm. running the marathon yes. in May. Mm -hmm. And what I think the first initial thing that's not creepy is you guys were genius with the way you went to track him because you used we Uber. We used Uber, yeah. And we got on the news, too. Like, the, the, new, the local news, which the um, cover story that night was The Flying Pig. Like, it was the first... 27 minutes. I mean, it was basically their entire news it's broadcast. A big deal there, yeah. It is, it is. So in Cincinnati, this is the big race, the Flying Pig. And um, yeah, so we had gone to see him, see Rob at mile four and cheer him on, woo woo woo. And then um, we were heading to mile six and we missed him because we asked for directions from a police officer when we should have just made a left and been there because we knew where we were going. But the race is on such a broad area that it's, it's twenty six miles it's impossible to navigate to like get sure. to mile 12 or so um and we, lots of roads are closed yes because of the race so um michael thought it would be a good idea to try to uber even though all the roads are closed and he found a guy who was literally right around the corner and we hopped in his car and we went to four other places to cheer him rob Genius. on and uh, rob had no idea what mile markers we were going to be at but um when we were at mile 12 the news crew had stopped our uber driver to interview him and then we were leaving to go to mile 16 or 18 or wherever we headed next and uh the news lady was like wait are you the people who hired him yeah and so then they interviewed michael and me and we were all cheering and it was cute it was really fun it was so much fun so, so but at some point you stop off and you have to use the loo 
Oh, well, this was the first. Okay, so I'm not a runner, uh, but I've done races. She's a runner. <laughs> Who's and gonna have leave my house with a black eye? But anyway, it's gone. <laughs> at least a big pinch. So um, I'm familiar with how to utilize a porta potty. Right. I'm very familiar because when you, you do a race, get, yeah. you have to your bowels have to do what they got to do, and your guts got to do what you do before a race. Thank you, but yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm familiar with the squat, and uh, you know, don't touch anything, and yeah. you, know, you just got to do it and. Squat for a while to do whatever you gotta do. All right, so there is a row of 9,267 porta potties, and they're all there's a line for them. So, I this is right after the start of the race. So it's early, I, is it dark? It's ish, yes, it is. It is. And we had cheer Bob on at the start, we got it on video, it was awesome. Cowbell going, and we're about to walk to mile four, which was almost right around the corner for us. And so there was a 9,000 porta potties and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to stop real quick and I'm going to, I'm going to tinkle You're before do we it. do this. Do and so thing. I stopped into the porta potty. I pulled my pants down. I squatted like a, not even a close to the potty squat and stood up, pulled my pants up, sanitized my hands after wiping. And right. then I'm leaving and I'm walking and I'm like, God, I still smell poop. Why do I smell like, why do I smell so, who stepped in dog crap? I mean, it just smelled awful. Couldn't have been you that stepped no, in no, dog crap. No, no, absolutely not. No, because I was, no, no. And so we saw Rob at mile four. Woo! And then we turn around to get to mile six and I'm like, who stepped in? Does everybody else smell poop? Because I smell poop. And Michael's <laughs> and like, you don't yeah, even check I your smell shoes. Poop. I did check my shoes. I was looking and I'm like, there's nothing on my shoes. Who stepped in dog crap? And who would step in dog crap? We're in the middle of the road. There's not who That's so gross. Ugh, I'm so frustrated. So um and I and it can't get the smell out of my nose. What? Yeah. So <laughs> now we're running to mile six and I'm getting sweaty and I wipe my um, my brow with my hand and I go to wipe it on my pants and there is poop all over the back of my pants and my crotch not my poop mind you somebody needs instructions on how to use a porta potty because whoever used a porta potty before me squatted wrong and pooped all over the porta potty which got on the back of my pants are you you're crying she's crying she's laughing at me I haven't even heard the so, story <laughs> So whoever pooped, expl their butt exploded all over the porta potty when I pull my pants down to pee and squat. Their poop gets all over my pants. And you break your legs or your pants across the poop in yes. the seat. Yes, yeah, because I, who would know? So after mile six when we missed Rob, I found a priest outside of a Catholic church and said, Father, can I please use your restroom? Someone else has sinned upon my pants. <laughs> I'm going to need forgiveness for the words I'm about to say. And um, he's like, well, yes, come on in. And he shows me to this basement bathroom, and I literally take my pants off and Ugh. wash them with hand soap. And uh, it was disgusting. It was disgusting. It was so <laughs> gross. I really wanted to put something on the flying pig page to say, okay, here are directions on how to use a porta body because somebody needs to know this. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of investigative reporting. Oh, right my here. gosh. Okay, so, yes. What color was the poop? It was brown. <laughs> it wasn't a light brown. There was no green. It was, no, there was no green. It, it was, was brownish, like a muddy brown. There were, I mean, there was... Yeah. Yeah. And was it... It was uh, a little texture. Chunky on your pants or smeary? Smeary. Smeary. Do you wet. think it was a man or a woman? Ooh. I think a woman would have had better aim. I think it had to be a lazy guy who was just like, you know what, I'm not going to touch this porta potty. And he's used to standing and peeing. So he was like, you know what, you I'm think just he gonna... just stood up and pooped? Uh, uh, that's what my <laughs> guess would be. Yes. Yes, ma'am. You forgot there were rules like you should sit. I'm going to post them. You know what, next year, if we go to this race, I'm going to post rules on how to shit, shoot, poop in a porta potty <laughs> on every single porta potty wall and be like, you know what, here's what you do. I'm a victim. You know what? I feel like a victim. I, I had to be should... tested for. for Communicable Stop. diseases I because I had poop all up in. So yeah. we're looking for a man, Ugh. tall man, short man. I don't know. I got it. I can imagine this guy. All right, so this guy he's standing there in the he's toilet. He's got <laughs> standing. He's a short man with red hair. Oh boy, slightly overweight, <sighs> and he maybe has. Um, a problem with his back scoliosis possibly okay. because he can't obviously stand up as straight as he should be yes and he probably has green eyes you know what i think you're right 
I hate that guy. <laughs> you nailed it with the green eyes. <laughs> the porta potty pooper. Now, trouble. Based on the experience pre race, do you think he was able to finish the race? Oh, God. I think that he sounds probably, like ugh. a traumatizing. He probably had to poop more problems. than that. If he, ugh. You think? Ugh. So gross. It was horrible. It's it's disgusting. I would I would be mortified if I pooped in my own pants. <laughs> somebody, somebody else's else poops, poops in my pants. Somebody don't know. I know. Oh, this is a, it was a the it, redheaded horrible. guy. Redheaded, green eyed, Ugh. short statured, chunky man is a uh, he's a jerk. <laughs> I hate that guy. <laughs> Porta potty pooper is a uh, yeah. So not my friend. When I lived in the dorm in my freshman year, and this is also totally. A sidebar, right? We're not talking about clever race uh, tactics to support your friends while you go. We had um, someone who lived on the floor in the dorm, and we were all women's floor, or girls, whatever. We were 18, so it's probably girls' floor. Mm -hmm. And um, there was always poop on the seat. Mm. I know. In a girl's floor. Don't, I mean... And so, yeah. Don't you use toilet paper the seat? What's going on there? Three layers of toilet paper and something's got to add or something was happening. And so we Maybe came up splashed. with some sort of. Maybe it splashed. No, no, it was literally poop on the toilet seat oh. regularly. And I don't know, it was in our little dorm bathroom. There were maybe six dolls, six showers, six sinks. Mm. <clears throat> and, um, so what are these stories that you probably came up with? Probably 25 girls sitting in the, on the hall. So who knew? And we weren't going to set up cameras and, you know, set people up. But my friend Missy who is so funny oh my gosh she made posters like we're we're looking wanted the toilet crapper <laughs> blah 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 and um someone told me in other countries they squat on a toilet because it puts you in a better uh, like the, the squatty system, potty the, like squatty, the squatty, squatty potty, potty. yeah your yes. knees are supposed to be elevated yeah because it opens up your your gut and your rectum so that you can open that, up that rectum yeah let the poop fly out there you go that's what but happened don't let the, it fly the, onto the seat no maybe, maybe you just had a guy who had proper pooping technique and you paid the price for it but it should at least aim your pooper <laughs> into the pooper yeah yeah it should at least make a splash of some kind <laughs> there should be some sort of reward where you know there a little <laughs> laser beam goes into the toilet and you get some ding, sort ding, of ding, 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 yes ding, ding, yeah some sort of congratulatory sound or oh. candy or something when you <laughs> candy <laughs> i don't want any other candy that came out of a porta potty i'm just anywhere. i'm just brainstorming here this is, <laughs> let's just go with a bell we're gonna a make a lot of money fine. on this now this is gonna be oh. our, our shark tank proposal <laughs> all right so you're on race day and you gotta go you know what i just heard this really awesome podcast it's um it the was fitness about, show. No, that is my number one favorite podcast. Obviously, um, but this one was about the world, the world's largest urinal, yeah. and they use it for the New York Marathon. And this man huh. made this urinal. It was on um, the Human Race I podcast. How much room do you need for your urine? It was the most ginormous. I can't even remember. No, it was are more you, than a mile long? Oh, oh! So all the men can all gather yes. and pee mm -hmm. at the same time. Yes. Exactly. How many men will it accommodate? A lot. It was used for the New York Marathon. But you didn't get statistics? I can't remember. But I remembered that it was the world's longest urinal. I gotta know. Well, we'll have to, I'll have to look it up and I Research will report it. back. I will report back. Thank you. We'll put it that in the comments kind of section awesome. of the podcast. Aren't you glad ladies don't have to do that? To we'll just kind of like, yeah, I don't know, just communal peeing. Like you and I next to each other. <laughs> that would probably be really fun. <laughs> I don't think women would mind as much. I, I don't know. Guys like have this thing about don't look at, you know, don't move your Do eyes, not? don't shift I your bet eyes. They are checking look each forward. other out. I think they are in their peripheral vision just to make sure that they can man up. But I think there's supposed to be rules. Like I've heard it on Seinfeld or Friends, you know, just right. don't, don't shift your eyes, look straight ahead, don't move your I, My IQ about man parts has risen extremely lately because I have, uh, it's a serious XM. Mm. I've been listening to Howard Stern. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I've learned some things. <laughs> some things like I what? dare like not what? repeat. <laughs> Trust me. It's, it's a little vulgar. It, yeah, surprising information I hadn't nice. known before. Well, when this is over, we'll have to chat a little yeah, bit about the surprising I'm not sure information. If I even, yeah, it's are been a blush. Nah, no, Maybe. but I but I do sit there and think, huh, guys are interesting, right? <laughs> I feel like I know guys, but clearly not. And they don't know girls either. No, no. No, mm -hmm. they have no idea. They think they do though. Yeah. yeah. They probably wouldn't like us very much if they knew. Th what's going on in our head for real? I don't know. And all the parts. I just, yeah. 
I don't know. <laughs> Women, I guys, I think have it really lucky because they don't have as much plumbing as we do, and their organs on the outside, and ugh, I mean, just after the whole porta potty pooping, yeah, yeah, it just feels like a guy wouldn't have had that problem. Like he would have just like wiped himself off, or sweat would have rubbed it off, and he would have been good to go. But then we have to worry about it, like. Yeah. Getting all the way up inside. And so now you're inside. naked in the basement of the Catholic church with no no Wait, bottoms on. Right. Are you yeah. even wearing underwear at this point or are you bringing them in the sink too? No, I wasn't. I didn't have any underwear on because I was wearing my running pants. Oh, you're one of those. I wear the Do, thong. You don't wear the thong? No, because it's chafing. No, because in a try in a try suit, so you, you can't wear underwear. So. But you're not running. You're you're spectating. I know, but we were running from place to place, oh, so I was boy. ready to bolt. So yeah. if you go to Victoria's Secret, pink. They have, um, they're called No Show. I have those. Do you? Mm-hmm. And they're so soft I and they have know. no panty lines? Mm-mm. Really? Not while well running. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because you know what happens if you don't wear undies? You get camel toe. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, we'll have to um, talk about this after the show because I'm pretty sure that I have one pair of running pants at and they're no, We're, I don't wear them. No? Anymore. No. That, that hurts. I mean, if camel toe. Can, yes, I wouldn't want it either. No, I mean, if that seam isn't no, mm-mm. no, no panties. Really? Yeah. And mm. I used to be like the panty queen. Like I would wear panties with everything, except for a bathing suit. I would wear panties, but now so yeah, I, I don't wear them with the running shorts that have the built-in undies because that's just doubled yeah, up. I don't wear those. But really, the yoga pants with no undies. Huh. Mm-hmm. You're one of those. I am one of those now. Yeah. It's a newer thing for me, but yeah. Okay, so everybody. In the future, when you see Melissa out in yoga pants, you know what? I bet you pants. a lot of people don't She's wear commando. I am, I am, and, and I bet you you are too because no, you don't want no, that body line. Not. not you, you like the people listening, like all of you women out there. We're gonna have to have a poll on. We're gonna have the body body fitness okay. page that says, "Women, do you wear panties with your running pants?" Because I bet you, or your shorts. Bet you they don't. Shorts are different than the than the stretchy pants. Okay, right now I'm gonna stand up. I want you to look. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. So right there, no panty line. Well, that's and your toe. No camel toe. Right? Uh, I don't oh know. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> there is no camel toe. Oh, this is the worst <laughs> podcast in the history of the planet. By the Why way. Why did you have me come back? See, this like, is the problem. Hey, She's never gonna have me come things, back now. And then you come here, and it's gone down, <laughs> down, I down, the, down the porta down potty. Down the porta potty. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. So here's another porta potty special. <laughs> oh, story. fantastic! See, now it's not me. It's, it's no, it's yeah. no, but it's not. It's not horrible. It's not horrible, <laughs> but it's just hilarious. So I, I'm the announcer for Big Sur Marathon, and I work with Rudy, who's there, who's been there forever and ever. And then there, there's another guy, Dave Trombetta, and Dave does other things. And so we, um, he does the races, but then he does other hosting. He's wonderful. And, and he's funny, but I didn't realize how funny he is until this year at the, um, the April event, which is the Big Sur Marathon. And so it, Rudy does the start of the 26.2, and then there's a couple of other people on the mid, mid-range races. And then I'm camped out at the start line slash finish line of all the races. Mm-hmm. And the start line is for the 5K and I think the 12K. But I'm there on the microphone, and Dave is in the festival area where, you know, people go post-race, hang mm-hmm. out before their person comes in, where all this stuff's going on. But apparently, I'm talking to him. I'm like, hey, Dave, how are things going? And Dave's job is to, at some point, guide the people from the festival that are running the races to me. He, he takes them like the Pied Piper on the <laughs> microphone and says, let's go to Fitz. And they the come to the start line. Yeah. Thousands of them. But I, I'm... You know, how's it going there, Dave? He goes, well, I'm coming to you from the porta potty. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Apparently, they put his sound system right at the porta potties So, we're <laughs> blaring over one of the most prestigious races in the country. And not only is it prestigious, it legitimately is. These All the race committees in these navy blazers, they don't look like dirty run staff. They look like fancy pants at a golf tournament. And we're having this hideous, you know... Porta potty conversation. I'm like, so Dave, yeah, have pooper. you had any have you had any exit interviews over there? <laughs> or what's more popular today? Number one or number two? So he's talking to people from the porta potties. He takes this incredible rock star selfie from the porta potties. Nice. And it's it's just it's deteriorating much like this podcast. Is. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And <laughs> uh, it's going between that. We've got the um, Haribo gummy bear, life-size oh. gummy bear out there. They've sponsored gummy gummy bear packets for everybody. And between those two conversations, at some point I go, 
Dave, you know we're about to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> All the Big Sur staff people were breaking apart. They were loving it, but um, and Richin yeah. got into the oh, Big Sur. I'm yeah. so excited. He entered the lottery, and then he got in. I'm so excited. Yeah. So Hottie Richin, Stephanie Shemansky. I'm sure she's going to get in. Um, Carolyn Simpson, Samson. Uh, Jenny Eckenrode. Oh, we have a lot of hotties coming. I'm so excited. Yeah. So the Big Sur Marathon is spectacular. If you guys are interested in running it, they're November, it's an April race. They just had, they already had the lottery for the actual marathon, which is a pretty big deal. Um, and, and so many people apply to get in and many people do not get in because it's just such a hot topic and that's their, their fair way of doing it. You know, everybody entered the lottery will draw mm-hmm. names, um, by, at random, but then there's shorter races. There's a 21 miler, and you get basically all the good stuff of the marathon without this. Sh- you get the wicked cutoff time, but it's not as wicked because you save yourself five mm-hmm. miles. There's, I believe, a 10.6 miler, and then there's the two shorter ones, but that's such a fun event. So even if you didn't get into the 26.2, plan to go to Big Sur in April. Mm-hmm. The race is the whole event. I I'm not a mushy person. I literally cried last year when I left. Aww. I was just, and I had to leave in the middle of one of the wrap-up parties. And it just, I, it was so heartbreaking because it's such a beautiful place. And then in November, um, Rudy and I will be the announcers at, um, it's called now the Half Marathon of Monterey Bay, but it's formerly known as a Big Sur Half. So unfortunately right now, registration is a little bit down because I don't think people have connected the dots. Aww. They haven't done as good of a job telling people, hey, Big Sur Half Marathon is now called something else, and people aren't putting the uh, connect, Formally connecting known the dots. As. Yeah, so I actually called the race director. I said, you know what? I think you should do this. So they said they would, in all future promotions, you know, yeah, that's do a good the idea. formally known as. But anyways, And there's so, another race you're doing in Florida, right? You're announcing <clears> one? Yeah, yeah. Actually, November will be fantastic. So if anyone wants to run with me on November, uh, I think 18th, it's 7th or the 8th. It's the Sunday. Um, it's, I don't know, it's some November 7th ish, but it's the surfing Madonna beach run Mm. in Encinitas, California. It's a 5k, 10k, 15k and kids races. And we will be, they actually run on the actual beach in Encinitas, which is gorgeous. And it's, uh, I think low tide. So they'll have a lot of room on the beach to run, but we're working with Guinness and it will be the world's largest beach run ever recorded. Nice. Not Guinness the beer. No, Guinness book Book of records. Yeah. So, but they're, these race directors have are so much fun. They had an inaugural half marathon in March, and Sunita's half, which Rudy and I hosted, and it was a blast. And the people, everybody was so happy, and it was the craziest, most fun vibe, Aww, especially for awesome. a new race ever. So that's the first-ish weekend of November, and then the next weekend I'll be hosting the mar- half marathon, what is it? Yeah, half marathon in Monterey Bay, which is the Big Sur half, and there's the kids' races, and then the next week, I'm really excited because now I have a big Florida that event. That is so exciting because you're never in no. Florida. No, all of my events are basically everywhere else. Yeah. So I'm thrilled. And it's St. Pete Run Fest. It's the weekend of November 18th and 19th. And on the 18th, they'll be having kids races, a one mile, and then a shorter races for the little guys. And then there's a celebrity mile. So they'll be having some notables from the community. I believe the Tampa Bay Bucks will be out there, oh, the Rays. Um, they have some legit celebrities. They have incredible sponsors for all the events. And there's actually a double dash. So on Sunday, there's a half marathon. Oh, I there's saw a that. relay and a 5K. So the half starts at 7. The, re- the 5K starts at 1030. So ambitious runners can do both. But for most of these races, fitness. Juju is codes fitness. And at St. Pete Run Fest, that'll save you. And I believe it's the same at Surfing Madonna. But, um... I'm writing it down because I... Yeah, so are you going to come run with me in November? I, I can in do the Florida? 18th. I can do that, the 18th. No plane ticket required. I know, that's amazing. Yeah, and I think this will be one of those destination events that people from California are now flying to. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. That's awesome. Because I got a lot of those in California where our, you know, on the race mat, we have names from people all over the U.S. and beyond. I think this event will be turn into one where people from all over the country are coming to Florida. St. Pete owes me because that's where I did the St. Anthony's um, triathlon and I broke my arm and my leg. Yikes. So I need to redeem myself in St. Pete. You know what? I will let them know and I'll make sure they rubber mat the whole course. Perfect. Thank you. And I should probably wrap myself in one of those like I don't know, one of those big blow up balls. I'm just going to get you a diaper so you don't have to go into the porta potty. (laughs) Oh gosh. We're gonna no, have, we're gonna be no, prepared, no and I will races. make that announcement, folks. Melissa Stephanie oh, here, no. so <laughs> hold her hand, hold her up. 
And if she she's got to go, I'm don't, just going to be the first one into a porta potty. Her pants normally <sighs> full of camel toe or full of diapers. With, why am I friends with you? Why? All right, folks, I need can... to apologize and say goodbye because yeah. I'm never going to be invited back again. We're so going. I love you all, and I apologize <laughs> that I will not be back on the fitness podcast anymore because um, I did a really crappy job no, today. <laughs> no, everybody likes talking about a little bit of um, disgustingness sometimes. Fortified conversation mm-hmm. never gets old. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right, folks. So, where do people find you? Oh, I'm on the Hottie Bodies Fitness page on Facebook, or you can find me on Instagram, Running Working Mom. Right. And for me, go to morningmile.com. Help me get more kids moving in the morning. That's the best before school walking running program in the world, period. And then find me at Fitness on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Reach out. Let me know. What you think about this very <laughs> educational podcast, and if you have any suggestions for Mark. We love you. All right, you can tell everybody. Hey, get to work. Get to work. Bye. Hi, this is Rudy Novotny, the voice of America's marathons. We all love how much running has benefited every aspect of our lives, so much so that most of us only wish we'd started sooner. Wouldn't it be wonderful to gift the opportunity to children of today? Well, you can. The Morning Mile is a before-school walking and running program that gives children a chance to start each day in an active way while enjoying fun, music, and friends. That's every child, every day. It's also supported by a wonderful system of rewards, which keeps students highly motivated and frequently congratulated. Created by our favorite fitness expert, Fitz Kohler, Morning Milers across the country have run over 2 million miles and are having greater success with academics, behavior, and sports because of it. The Morning Mile is free to the child, free to the school, and is inexpensively funded by businesses or generous individuals. Help more kids get moving in the morning by visiting MorningMile.com. Champion the program at your favorite school or find out more about sponsorship opportunities. That's MorningMile.com. Long may you run.